Okay, so the first tip is recoil control. Recoil control is so important. You need good recoil control to stay accurate and make sure you are hitting your target and not aiming too high because of recoil. A way to practice this is to start a custom match like I have now and find a wall like this one that will show you the holes or marks that your bullets make. Preferably a non-destructible wall. First of all, I'm going to show you me shooting the weapon without moving my mouse in any way. Now I'll just show you again. I'm simply just holding down the trigger and as you can see from the bullet pattern, the recoil forces the gun up but also a little to the right as well. So now we know that we have to move the mouse a little left as well as a little down. Another key thing to remember is when you are going to fire you want to move the mouse and pull the trigger at the same time. You don't want to wait till you see recoil to start moving your mouse. If you do, you will probably overcompensate for the recoil and pull down too hard, too fast, like I just did there. So now let's try doing them at the same time. It's a much tighter group. This does require a lot of finesse and practice, so be patient, and with enough time you will be making tight groups. When you are happy with your grouping, you can make it harder and challenge yourself more by adding range. If you are hitting tight groups across the map then clearly you are good and good for you. Please send help for me. This range is hard but you know just keep practicing and yep. as you can see I went way above there. It's so hard to do. But what you can do is you can also burst fire rather than go full out at long range. It's usually the best thing to do and especially if you're not confident in your recoil control at long ranges like me. But it is much easier to get much tighter groups at long range. But yeah, with enough practice, you'll be making tight groups and then you can bring that into the game. Okay, the next tip I've got for you guys is peaking. Now mastering peaking in Siege, in my opinion, is the quickest way to see a massive improvement in your game. First of all, you should know that you never want to peek a door or window right next to it as enemy players will be able to see your rifle and this will give your position away. Usually, the more distance you have between you and the door or the window, the better. Now, when you are peeking, you can either peek really slow and scan the whole room so you can find out where people are. Like so. Just nice and slow. Find the limit. Or, if you already know where people are, you can fast peek and name where they are going to be. Slow peeking is great for getting information on the enemy's whereabouts, but remember if you are peeking slow, you are giving players more time to react when they see you peeking. This is where fast peeking comes in. The faster you peek an enemy, the less chance they have of reacting and killing you before you can kill them. So you could slow peek, for example, you could slow peek to find out where the enemies are, then fast peek them while pre-aiming and getting an easy kill. Another tip for slow peeking is to peek a little, then go back, then peek a little more, then go back and repeat the process till you have seen the whole room. This makes it hard for enemies to react to you peeking even when you are slow peeking. One of the main reasons to peek fast is peek's advantage. This means that whoever is peeking you will have a slight time advantage over the enemy stood still. The amount of advantage depends on the amount of ping the peeker has. A higher ping means the peeker will be able to see you before you see him. You should always take advantage of this. A way to counter this is if you are about to be peeked is to move from side to side. Just make sure you are not stationary. Pre-firing is a great way to get a free kill if you know where an enemy player is or if you have strong map knowledge and know where they will most likely be. Pre-firing just gives the enemy no time to react whatsoever. When done well and accurately, it is unbeatable. To pre-fire well, you do need good recall control and you also need to be confident in where you are pre-aiming. So let's say we know there's someone in that corner of the room. We go in, we're already aiming where they're going to be, and we're pre-firing. And as we're walking around, 
we shoot and usually they just have no chance so this corner the same five seconds that is free firing another tip is to be unpredictable for instance, if you are peeking an enemy through your window and miss and he fires back, you don't have to repeat the same place, especially the same timing. You could peek the same place if you felt confident, but maybe wait a second or two, or if you are standing, peek crouch next time. Try to always do what the enemy is not expecting. Maybe instead of re-peeking, you can run around and flank, or maybe you could ping him if he's stood still and shoot through another window at the ping. Be creative, and don't be afraid to run off and leave the enemy. Better to run off and try getting him later than to be killed by him. For instance, in this clip that you're watching now, I peaked IQ, then ran to the back of the room and looked through the same door, but behind more cover, and I'm now overlooking the objective. If I had kept re-peaking IQ, I probably would have died. Now, I'm just waiting for them to push into the objective so I can flank them. Nice. Good shit, Connor. He's all on objective. The last tip I'm going to give you today is to drone more. Always use a drone to scout an area before going in. It helps so much and gives you a huge advantage of knowing where the enemy is. Try not to spot with your drone either, especially if Valk comes. The best case scenario with your drone is that you have seen him on your drone and you know where he is, but he doesn't know that you know where he is. If you ping him, he will most likely move and probably take out your drone. However, sometimes pinging an enemy can be useful like in this clip. Pinging this enemy allowed me to know his position through the door so I could hopefully wallbang him. Unfortunately, he didn't die, but I laid him up like a Christmas tree. Also, once you know where the objective is at the start of the round when you are attacking, there is no use in rushing in with your drone and getting it killed. It is very useful to have a drone on the objective, but it is also very risky. Sometimes it's better to just drone out where you are going to enter the building and leave the drone there. And then hopefully the drone will see any enemies coming in the room to give you a heads up for when you enter. I hope you have all enjoyed the video and found the tips useful. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already for more Siege videos and more tips coming out soon. Leave a like if you liked the video and leave a comment down below if the tips helped you. We all know no one likes to be shat on, so hopefully now you are one step closer to being a god of Siege.